Hello YouTube. Last week we covered the gymnosperms or softwoods or conifers as they're known. This week we're going to start on the angiosperms or hardwoods. And these are the trees with the typical leaves that most people know and identify with, uh, the flat, more uh, soft leaves. Um, but before we start into our first family, I wanted to bring up um, an important distinct distinction between leaf placement that we'll be using between the different families. And so that is the placement of uh, leaves that are alternate, opposite, or whorled. And basically this just means with alternate, uh, each leaf will appear one after the other on different sides, whereas with opposite they're paired as you go along a branch. And whorled means there are more than two leaves um, paired at a single node. So in this case there's four, but in other cases there may be three. Um, different families will either be alternate or opposite. Uh, those are the two most common. And for the most part, most of the families are going to be alternate, but this is a good starting point in figuring out uh, which family you might be looking at when you first come up to a tree. With opposite, it's also important to realize that sometimes if a leaf is broken off, it may appear to be alternate, so you have to examine the whole branch to make sure you get um, the actual leaf placement. So our first family is going to be the birch family. Uh, there we go. Oops. Okay. So the birch family, Betulaceae. So this includes the birches, the alders, the ironwood, and the musclewood. And so we're going to go through the different genera and talk about what distinguishes them from one another and how to identify them. But for all the trees in this family, the leaves are alternate, they're toothed, so the edges aren't smooth, they're toothed. They have pinnate veins in the leaves, so right here on the left with the uh, veins branching out from the midrib. And the leaves tend to be egg-shaped or triangle-shaped. Uh, the flowers are small and are composed of male and female catkins. So here on the right, these are catkins. These are the males here, and this is a female catkin. And they're cone-like or caterpillar-like clusters of the flowers. The male catkins tend to hang downward, and in many species they are present through the winter. So the first genus in this family is the birch genus, and this is called Betula. Um, they're trees or shrubs, and they're characterized by that distinctive bark where it's often white and it becomes flaky and paper-like. So this is what most people think of when they think of birches. The female catkins tend to be more soft and are single, whereas for the uh, alder or ulnus uh, female catkins, they occur in clusters and become hard and stiff, but we'll show those uh, in a moment. So here you can see the teeth along the leaf edge and the shape of it. And again, that distinctive bark. So this is an example of a paper birch here. On the next slide, we also have the river birch, the weeping birch, and the yellow birch. And the yellow birch is an example of a birch tree that doesn't have white bark. So when you're trying to find or distinguish between individual species, there's other things you need to take into consideration and not just the bark. Um, one important thing that the Betula genus has, the birches have, that the other species in this family don't, are these spur branches right here. So you can see here alongside, these are all leaf scars where leaves would be and there's bundle scars within the leaf scars. So these are present on birches, but not on alders or ironwoods or musclewoods. So moving on to the alders, their scientific genus name is Almus. The introduced black alder is more tree-shaped, whereas the rest are more shrub-like, as you can see here with the green alder. Again, their leaves are alternate with uh, teeth around the edges. And here is a comparison of uh, alder and birch catkins. So you can see here the female catkins are very small. They look like tiny pine cones in a cluster, whereas the female catkins on the birch are much larger. So this is a good distinguishing factor between the two groups. Uh, moving on to the ironwood, also called the eastern hornbeam. And this is the scientific name, Austria virginiana. Um, again, they have the alternate teeth leaves or tooth leaves, the female and male catkins here. And this is what their uh, mature fruits look like. That uh, They're inside these capsules. So after the female catkin is fertilized and develops these fruits, 
they appear within these capsules here. Um, a main distinguishing factor for the ironwood is the bark. You can see uh, mature bark presents uh, in these vertical strips that become flaky. Um, whereas with the birch, again, they're usually white and papery uh, strips. These are vertical strips. And then the last species, the musclewood or the blue beech, also known as Carpinus carolinia, Caroliniana, um, can be a small tree or shrub like, but in this example, it's a larger tree. Uh, unlike the other species, the male catkins are not present in the winter. So these are the male catkins down here. These are the female catkins up here. But again, the main distinguishing factor is the bark, where you can see it's much smoother than the other species and almost appears to look like muscle, hence the name. So just to recap um, the differences between these different genera, uh, the birches will often have white, papery, flaky bark and they do have spur branches, whereas alders will have smaller female catkins that appear in clusters. Here's a good picture here again. They do not have spur branches. Ironwood uh, has bark in vertical flaky strips and again does not have spur branches. And musclewood has muscly, smooth-looking bark and does not have spur branches and does not have male catkins in the winter. So I didn't go through this species by species because there's a couple different alder species in the alder ge uh, genus as well as a couple different birch species in the birch genus. Um, to tell different individual species apart, you'll have to go into more detail, such as the length of the stipules that attach the leaves to the branch, or um, the number of scales on their winter buds and stuff like that. So that's why it's important to have a good field guide if you want to get the tree down to the exact species. But for now, we're going to keep it relatively simple. And this is how you distinguish between the different genera within the birch family.